If you're thinking of switching to Linux, you might be told that the only real way to do it is if you've got AMD components, specifically like AMD GPUs. A lot of people will tell you that Nvidia struggles quite a bit on Linux, like the drivers are just dodgy or, you know, that there's just not as much support. And honestly, I can kind of attest to that. Like about a year ago, when I was first thinking about switching over to Linux, a lot of operating systems just flat out were saying like, no, we don't support Nvidia GPUs. But a few months ago, when I was actually like seriously considering switching to Linux, I used a distro called Nabara OS and I had a lot of issues with it on Nvidia. So much so that I actually went out and built a entirely AMD based PC. And then I installed Bazite on it. And you know, I had a good experience, but I've talked extensively about, you know, the pros and cons of using Bazite. But now that I've got this new PC, this new AMD based PC, my old like pre-built that I bought back in 2023 is kind of just sat there collecting dust. So I thought it might be a fun experiment if I install Bazite on it and see how the experience is. Even on the installation page, it tells you that there are some like drawbacks if you're using an Nvidia GPU, especially if you are considering using the like Steam Deck styled image, like the, I think it's called GameScope overlay. Like it tells you specifically that, especially on resolutions above 1440p, there's gonna be like graphical issues and all of this. So, but you know what? I'm not gonna let that deter me. So why don't we go and take a look at the PC and see what needs adjusting because it's been a while since I've sort of opened it and cleaned it and stuff. So yeah, let's go have a look. So taking the screws off the side panel and uh, opening it up, you can see that the PC itself is pretty proprietary. Like, well, I forgot to actually um, screw in that, that GPU, but you can kind of see that this is kind of a proprietary, um, GPU here and the motherboard itself is too like all of these components like the RAM and PSU and everything like that it's all pretty locked down uh, I think it's a 450 watt power supply in this I, I do think that it needs a repaste so I'm, I'm gonna sort of open up the I'm gonna take off the fan here the CPU fan and sort of take a look honestly it doesn't look too bad but I figured I might as well repaste it anyway I'm just using Arctic MX4 and it's working pretty well. I think I did a pretty bad job of applying that, but it should be fine. I went sort of hunting for screws that would fit in the um, GPU bracket because there is like a dedicated GPU bracket in this GPU because of how big it is. But yeah, actually the, the most difficult part of this like teardown was actually trying to find the right screws, just trying to find spare screws that fit. I think I messed up when I put the screws into the um, the actual GPU mount here because I'm pretty sure that you are supposed to put the the like side tray thing I think you're supposed to put that on before and then screw it down but because I'm not very intelligent I kind of put the screws in first and then it wouldn't clip on so I thought why don't I just sort of make the holes bigger with my screwdriver but it works in the end so yeah now that we've had a look at sort of the inside of the PC and you know, repasted it and everything. Let's get Bazite installed. So installing Bazite is actually really easy and I'm gonna sort of walk you through the process now because, you know, I've not actually done that before. So you essentially head to their website and download the ISO. Like it just asks you what type of hardware do you have? What uh, what GPU do you have? And which desktop environment? So obviously I, I chose, I've got a desktop and I'm running an RTX card and I want KDE as well. There's some people who like GNOME more. I've not, I don't think I've actually tried GNOME before, so I just stuck with KDE. And I also selected that I do want Steam Gaming Mode because that's a pretty big feature of Bazite. And that's like a big selling point of like having like a home console experience. So I thought even though there are graphical issues and it does mention here that there are graphical issues, I thought I would try it anyway. And you know, whilst that's downloading, I installed Rufus, which is what we're gonna to use to burn the ISO to a USB. Uh, now, just a fair warning, if you've not burnt an ISO to a USB before, it's basically gonna erase all of the data on that USB. So make sure that it doesn't have anything on it that you know you wanna keep, or just make sure that you back it up before you burn it. But yeah, it's an incredibly easy process. Once you launch Rufus, 
it essentially just asks you which drive you want so you just select the USB and then on boot selection you choose the Bazai ISO that you just downloaded and then I would just keep everything on default and then click start. Now that the ISO has been burned onto the USB we can actually plug it into our PC and, and sort of get it installed. All right, so there's a couple of things in the BIOS that we want to make sure that we have selected. So the main most important thing is that in security, you make sure that secure boot is disabled. For me, it's F12 to get to the boot menu. So I, I hit that and I made sure that it launched into that instead of going to the BIOS. And on the grub, you just hit install Bazite. It will take a minute to load, but then it will take you straight to the installation. The tech scaling is pretty dodgy on the on the installation thing, but yeah, make sure that you choose the correct language and on the installation destination, make sure that you select the SSD that you want to install Bazai on. And this is really important because if you've got multiple SSDs installed, first of all, I don't recommend that you do. Just have the SSD that you want Bazai on. But it's it's gonna ask you to reformat or delete all of the data on the SSD, make sure that it's formatted so that it can install correctly. Um, and then you want to set up a user profile. Um, and I basically just kept it pretty basic. I, I don't need a password, so I, I left that empty. Um, and from there, you can basically just hit begin installation. And this takes quite a while. So, you know, be prepared to wait a bit. It depends on like how fast your USB is, I think. But this took me about half an hour, so. One thing that really surprised me is that unlike when I've installed Bazai in the past, when I installed Bazai on, you know, AMD cards and I went straight into sort of Steam mode or whatever, it took ages to like install updates. Whereas here, I think because I chose a desktop environment and it gave me a desktop ISO, it essentially booted me straight into the desktop. And so I didn't really have to worry about like waiting ages to install updates through Steam's client. It, I could do that myself. But yeah, the first thing that I did was may, went into my display settings and upped the render scale up to about 200% because this is a 4K TV and everything's just super small otherwise. I also enabled HDR and upped the brightness just so you guys can see it a bit better. But yeah, I mean, it literally just worked. I spent a little while making sure that it was all up to date so you can do that by literally just hitting the uh like the start the start button and uh hitting system update and yeah after you've done that you've basically got a clean perfect installation of bazite and it's you know hopefully it works hopefully that tutorial was like you know easy enough to follow but so yeah like it was fully installed and it seemed to be working fine but as soon as i went into game mode i ran into a pretty big issue and i was pretty worried about this for a, for a minute, basically my signal just completely went. Like I had no display and I tried adjusting my TV settings and it just wouldn't work. But I decided to reboot my PC and once it had rebooted, it went straight in, straight into game mode. I, and I mean, this shocked me. I was just really surprised because we were running at 4K 120 Hertz at full 10 bit color and there are no graphical issues whatsoever even though it said on the bazite website that nvidia users will have issues above 1440p using game mode but i did not have any of those issues i am insanely shocked right now i was not expecting it to actually just work that's kind of crazy it was not like this a couple months ago like this whole screen here was just completely like messed up so i had to sort of take a moment to, to appreciate the fact that i was actually running this <laughs> at like perfect quality this is better this is better image quality than at amd because again amd cards don't have hdmi 2.1 output so this is actually like a phenomenal image but we need to try games the first game that I tried was Spyro Reignited Trilogy. And the reason why I picked this one, it might be a bit of a random one, but I, for the life of me, could never get this game to work properly on any of my PCs running Bazite or Nobara. 
it always crashed within the first couple of minutes. And yeah, after about 30 seconds to a minute, the game just crashes. And I thought, you know, maybe this is one of the errors with Nvidia cards, right? So I decided to boot into the desktop and then try it. And unfortunately, the same issue occurred. So I immediately decided that I would download GE Proton and it's actually really easy to do that on Bazite because the like the Proton updater is just installed by default on Bazite. So you can install GE Proton, which is essentially it's like a, an alternative compatibility layer to Steam's version of, of, of Proton and it has a quite a wider compatibility with games, especially games that use like pre-rendered video. Sometimes they just don't render using like the default Proton setting. So, you know, I thought I'd give GE Proton a try. It, there have been a few more iterations since the last time I tried it. And um, well, I'll, I'll let the footage speak for itself. I mean, I was playing this game for quite a while. I, I did a couple of levels and not a single crash. There was a bit of stuttering at the start. So I was thinking, oh, it's going to crash in a minute. But yeah, the stutters quickly went away. And, you know, this is at 1080p at a pretty much locked 60 FPS. And so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go a bit, I'm gonna get a bit greedy with, with the performance. So I decided to put everything from high onto ultra, you know, adjust the resolution and I put it up to 1440p. And yeah, it's the same story. I mean, it's it just works. It's just, it's a great experience. No no stuttering, no, no crashing or anything like that. This game is a bit funny with the FPS where the higher the FPS, pretty much the more broken it is. Like it has some weird like physics related bugs, but I did unlock the frame rate because I was curious to see what the actual raw performance was that we were getting on this, on this card. And we're getting about between 70 and 80 FPS, which I think is actually pretty pretty good honestly like that's for our little old rtx 3060 this is pretty good performance i would be pretty happy with this but yeah the main thing was is that stability and after completing a couple of levels it didn't crash so i, I would like to think that that sort of stability issue is no longer a problem just make sure that if you're playing spyro on bazai make sure that you install ge proton in fact, that's like one of the main things that you should be doing. If if you're having any kind of compatibility issue, one of the first things and most important things to do is to try different compatibility layers, whether it be Proton Experimental or, or GE Proton. So the second game that I tried is, you know, it's a bit more demanding. It's a bit more intensive. Um, but this is a game that I know works on Bazite because I, I, I played through the entire thing on my PC when it was running Bazite. And that's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, I think that the game actually remembered my graphic settings because as soon as I launched into the game, it was like defaulted to 4K. <laughs> so I immediately turned that setting down. But I had a weird issue where as soon as I enabled HDR, my entire PC crashed. And this is probably one of those weird Nvidia glitches that happens. I know that HDR is a bit finicky on Nvidia cards, but yeah, I, I you know, I, I gave it a minute to try and calm down, but no, I had to sort of hard reset my PC. But once I did, it actually booted into the game with HDR enabled, but I did decide to turn it off anyway, just to be on the safe side. I set the resolution to 1080p just to start off with, and I also put it on DLSS quality, which I think is probably like pretty low settings for this GPU. I think that the GPU is capable of doing way more than that. But I thought I would start off with this just, you know, as a baseline. And yeah, I mean, it speaks for itself. We're getting about 80 FPS here. And, you know, there's no stuttering. It's really smooth. So I thought I would, you know, up the resolution a bit. So I put it up to 1440p, still using DLSS quality. Uh, and we're on medium settings here. And yeah, it's the same story. The performance actually didn't really go down at all. We're getting drops into the into the high to mid 60s now, but it's still perfectly playable. So I thought I would push it just a little bit further and I changed the graphic settings from medium to high. And this is really, I think, the sweet spot. I think if you lock it to 60 FPS, you're gonna have a pretty fantastic experience in this game. So I was actually really, really impressed with the performance on this game. 
there's no stutter and it's super smooth. I did have an issue where when I disabled VSync, it was like stuttering or it was it didn't feel like it was at the frame rate that it should be. But re-enabling VSync fixed the frame pacing issues. And yeah, it's a really solid experience. I was not expecting it to be this playable, this good. And again, no crashes whatsoever. Now the final game for today, the final game that I tested is one that I know will not run well on this GPU, but I thought I would give it a shot anyway. Um, and that's Stalker 2. This is, you know, the notoriously terrible <laughs> PC port. This is months on, this game is still far from playable. I think, I still think it's pretty unacceptable, the performance levels, but I thought I would try it anyway, because you never know, I, there might be a surprise. I was surprised so far with, especially with Mars Morales. But after taking, you know, a good half an hour to compile shaders, which was not a good sign, I immediately dropped the resolution down to 1080p and put it on DLSS. Yeah, I mean, the performance kind of speaks for itself. It is not a very pleasant experience. It's super sluggish. It's very stuttery. I think that that's probably down to the 16 gigabytes of RAM. So, you know, I dropped the settings down to medium and you know what, I'll just, Without doing a step-by-step, -step, I'll just say that no matter what settings I chose for this game, I put it on the absolute lowest preset there was. And I also put the performance down to like DLSS balanced mode as well, which just looked awful. <laughs> 1080p DLSS balanced on a 4K TV does not look nice at all. And yeah, it's just, it's never going to be playable. It's not a good experience, but it didn't crash. So, you know, that can't be said for Spyro or Miles Morales. Those games both crashed. So I didn't spend long playing this because I really didn't want to sort of subject myself to it any longer because it's, it was a really bad experience. Yeah, I, I don't think that the visual quality of this game really justifies the, the awful performance, especially not on like a 3060, which I think is still a very popular card. You know, a game that a game like this should be playable at 1080p um on this card but it's it's not and that's just really like it's just a big shame so yeah overall i would say that the nvidia experience on bazai is actually really impressive like i was not expecting gamescope to work at all like on the bazai's homepage, it says that there are some graphical glitches above above 4k but honestly like the output is better than it is on amd because you get that 10-bit color profile and you you just get hdmi 2.1 support so now i'm having like now i'm having like second guesses about <laughs> why i built that pc i mean i'm running windows on that pc now anyway but it's really cool that the bazite is at a state now where i would actually say that it's worth checking out on nvidia Obviously your mileage may vary, I mean newer cards might have different issues and considering that on the Bazite page it still does say that there are graphics issues above 1440p. I, I, I'm going to take their word for it and I think that you know some cards probably still do have display issues. I mean in the short time that, that I've been testing it, like it's actually been working pretty well so I'm very happy with this and I honestly recommend it like if you want to just try it out just sort of dual boot or put it on a an old SSD that that you have lying around or whatever it's definitely worth checking out if this is something that you're interested in but yeah that's gonna about do it for today I hope you enjoyed watching this don't forget to like and subscribe if you if you did enjoy it because I'm gonna be making more content like this in the future so yeah thanks again and I'll see you in the next one